Welcome, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Tom Hanks Show. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, however you're picking us up, radio, podcast, stream, I'm just grateful that somebody listens to us. <laughs> it's one of those things where when you first get on radio, it's like, gosh, I hope somebody's listening to me. God, I want to be on broadcast radio. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be so great. And then you wonder, is anybody listening? <laughs> But after 14 years of doing this thing, it's like, people listen. Believe me, people listen. Last week, AJ was back. Angela Joseph, she's amazing. Incredible. 20th visit. A cosmic beast, we called that one. That's all about astrology, mostly. But, you know, with Angela, it's like, who knows where we're going with her. And it's always, as always, with the radio program, there's nothing. We we. we do not practice deadly. We don't have a script. We don't have anything. We just riff. Just like today's episode with my newbie friend, Emma Gillies, Journey into Higher Ed, the teacher. Let me do a quick little quick bio here. She's a young one. So she's a student at MSU. And we met recently and um, just had that immediate, you know, universal connection. You know how Tom has these things happen. It just happens. And it's just like grab onto them because there, there's talent there. And then we started talking and then things started to progress. And I could see that this, this young woman has tremendous, tremendous upside, tremendous upside. She is a English education major at Michigan state university as a teacher wants to be a teacher and professional teacher. She's passionate about teaching creativity and helping others. She's a, an, an outstanding poet. Um, been going through some of her writings and just reading things is just when you can read things, when people can write things at its depth at her age, there's a lot there. Okay. There's a lot to give back. There's so many good things. But the journey into higher ed is all about what and how, and how do you do this? And how do you give advice? And then on the second half of the episode, everybody, we will talk about the teaching aspect because Emma is very unique in that she was a, a full-time substitute teacher in the Lansing school district, which another thing that caught my ear and eye with her was her love for Lansing. And you all know how much I love Lansing and recording this episode from little house Lansing. So just her perspective from that, because she did that for a full six months, the previous spring semester while she was going to school full-time while she was working other jobs at the same time, this is the kind of kid I like. I mean, she's just like the worker bees, the ones who get it done, the ones who are in touch with themselves and the ones who want to just get better. I could do more on her bio, although she's pretty young. So it's like, there's not a lot there. We'll talk, we'll just let her talk about it. I want to welcome to the radio program, my new friend, Emma Gillies. Emma, thank you for taking the time and welcome to today's episode. Thank you, Tom. I am very, very honored and excited to be on the show today. I'm excited to talk about my journey, kind of how I got to MSU and my journey into higher ed and why I'm so passionate about it and just giving everyone just some input on it and whatever I've experienced, especially in Lansing and plans going forward and hopefully give voice for the community in a way and all students going into higher ed or teachers that are out there already that I think input for everyone is important, no matter what age, whatever job, whatever age in your career you're in, it's always good to kind of hear different people's perspective. So I'm yeah. very excited. You know, the funny thing, Emma, Emma Gillies is my guest today, everybody, Journey into Higher Ed, the teacher. The funniest thing is when I've had, and I've sent you some of the podcasts from previous um, students from MSU, your, all of your stories are different. So start kind of in the beginning, you know, what how you got into, you're an athlete, you've done some things, that you're a really high performer at the gym, but it's the teaching aspect and it's your journey. Your journey is unique. So start at the beginning, you know, start, you can go as far back as junior high, but remember we're talking to parents, grandparents, future students, could be talking to some of your students over at Pattengill, um, whatever, hopefully we are. I mean, you could send this right. thing up, hopefully your students hear this. Talk about your, your, your story. How did you wind up at MSU? Go ahead. Um, so I grew up in a really small town called Armada, um, really small high school. Um, during there, I had like, I think basketball was a big part of my life growing up, especially in junior high and middle school. Um, I had such bad anxiety about starting sports in middle school. So I didn't even start playing organized basketball till seventh grade. And my whole first season, I scored two points, 
one basket the whole entire season. I was not good whatsoever, but I knew I loved it. I had like aunts that played that really inspired me that played a uh, community college for a couple years. And my dad was a big motivator for sports, always pushed me. So that summer after my first season, I just, I wanted to get as good as I can. I met with the varsity coach for the first time. I dedicated my whole summer to AAU for the last two years of middle school and just every single day like I took full advantage of the summers and off season and honestly just busted my butt to improve and better myself because I had high expectations for myself and I knew my family did as well and uh going into my freshman year of high school like I got on the JV team first year and then was able to bump up with varsity pretty quick the next few years so it was just a huge passion of mine and I knew I wanted to continue it for as long as I could, but, um, university was never really in the question for me kind of finishing high school. I knew I wasn't in the state to like afford it, I guess. So I got scholarships to a few junior colleges, like a division three, but I loved big cities. So I took the opportunity I got in Grand Rapids and played for GRCC Lived there for about a year, um, ended up transferring back home to SC4 St. Clair on uh, Lake Erie, I believe, in Port Huron. Um, I just thought that was better for me. I had, or my grandpa was going through some health issues, so I figured it was just better to move home and I could still pursue basketball. And then um, come December of that season, I experienced some health issues that forced me to have to step away like full time. So I... Yeah, I kind of realized like it's I was proud of the progress that I've made, proud of my journey, my career. Figured it was about time to start focusing more on uh like what I wanted to do as my job. And I knew that uh teaching was my passion. I've always loved like inspiring inspiring others. I never even considered teaching to be my future job until like my senior year of high school anyway. So it was like a late kind of realization, but what made me really realize that I wanted to do English is because of my big passion for writing. And I, it wasn't until my senior year of high school where I got put in a creative writing class that like really allowed me to pursue and express my, my poetry side and like my creativity side of it. So that was that did all my research on MSU found out that it was best for education. I got pretty much a full ride from my dad's job. They gave me a huge scholarship. So I have that taken care of and I love it here so far. I've loved everything that I've good, good for you now. Okay. Before we go to break, cause we got about a minute to go here. Emma, Emma Gillis is our guest today. Everybody journey into higher ed. The teacher mentioned the names of the fam. You got to do the fam. If they don't hear their names on radio or podcast, you know, they get all like, why didn't you say your dog's name? <laughs> why didn't you mention me? Right. <laughs> so my mom's name is Kelly. Uh, my dad is David Gillies. And then I have two older sisters, Serena and Chanel, and a little brother, David. There so, you go. So exactly. there's four of you and good sized family. I mean, yeah. but it's a good, good intro into how you found yourself at MSU as an athlete. And then all of these little bumpy spots that mm-hmm. you go through and how do you navigate this stuff? And we'll talk a lot about this because we're going to go through the beginning of your academic career some of the mistakes you've made, some of the, some of the benefits that you've learned, some of the the good points, the bad points, how do we help the young people as they're getting into the university life? Because as a transfer student, you have a completely different perspective coming into higher ed. It's way different. You've been working the whole time. You've been supporting yourself the whole time. You've been paying all your own bills for, for your career so far, for your life so far. And we could talk about that when we come out of break here. Again, let me reset this thing because we're going to go to break, everybody. I'm going to carry this through. Emma Gillies is my guest. Emma is a junior, seniorish student at Michigan State University. She's a teaching um, English major, journey into higher ed. The teacher will talk through the show about the journey into higher ed. And then towards the latter half of the show, we're going to talk about her perspective as an educator in an urban district like Lansing, Michigan at Pattongill Junior High. I believe it's junior high or high school, whatever it is, but at Pattongill. Journey into higher ed, the teacher, Emma Gillies, is my guest. You're listening to The Tom Hanks Show. That's it. That's how easy that is. It ain't no big deal. 
All right, so I got reads that I do for the next three segments. So give me a couple minutes to okay. pay bills. And how you feel? Good. Good. Great. You sound good. You look great. You'll be fine. Thank you. Kelly David Sharina. Yeah, Serena. S E R E N A. And Chanel is S H A S S E R R E N A. E N A. Two R's. Yep. And then the second? Chanel is S H A N N E L L E. I want to never got that. And your brother? <laughs> uh David. David, named after his dad. Yep. Got it. Okay. Yes. Simple cake. Fun stuff. Here we go. Line that up. And second segment of the Tom Hatt Show is sponsored by you know who is sponsored by. Craig, Craig, Craig. Craig's been sponsoring the second segment of the Tom Matt Show for as long as we've had the Tom Matt Show. It's been a long time, five years or so. Ameriprise Financial, where we have all of our refirement zone savings with Craig, Craig, Craig. Your Ameriprise Financial Advisor, hopefully your Ameriprise Financial Advisor, definitely our Ameriprise Financial Advisor, can help you plan for the life you want today and well into the future. With the right financial advisor, life can be ism be brilliant. And the way the market goes up and down and sideways and all this good stuff and elections coming and all this stuff, that's things that you can't control, find people that can help you control these things and then you can make good decisions and then you can move forward and do what you're good at. Okay. That's the kind of how I roll. And that's why I call Craig at 1-800-528-1355. Local number is 517-483-4893. Emails craig.styles at ampf.com. His offices are located at 2651 Coolidge Road, Suite 103 East Lansing, Michigan, 48823. Here are some of the stations in and out of the network have carried us in the past, will carry us in the future. Who knows? Broadcast radio is crazy. WGHN 92.1 FM in Grand Haven, Michigan. First to ever carry us on broadcast radio, thanks to Will Teeman and Wendy Hart. Some of you may know those names. WGIM 1240 AM in Lansing, Michigan is the flagship of the Michigan Talk Network, where we are syndicated all over the Midwest. WGRW 1340 AM Grand Rapids, Michigan carried us for a long time. WKLQ 1490 Muskegon, Whitehall. WYPV FM 94.5 up in Mackinac City. And of course, the big stick at Michigan State University. Go green, AM 870 WKAR and simulcast on 102.3 FM in East Lansing. They are the bomb, and they are talk radio, carrying us 5 o'clock uh, Sunday afternoons, where we've been there for quite a while now. Thanking again to Craig Styles for creating his proprietary algorithm, Desideri Analytics. Remember, he helped Anya Gerstenberg, a senior that I know at Michigan State, do her senior cognate on Desideri Analytics. She got a four-point on that. Goes to show you that Desideri is the real deal. That's why you want to deal with Craig because that's what puts him over the top. It's his proprietary algorithm where we are making light of weighted decisions. And lastly, I want to say thank you to Stephen Ivy Gruber for carrying us on the Michigan Talk Network for as long as they have and believing in us and all those good things. I really appreciate that. And lastly, we have four books on Amazon, that thing called Amazon. Go check those out. Matter of fact, I just gave a handoff to my guest today, Emma Gillies, my first book. The Maximize book, gave that to her yesterday in our pre-show meeting. And hopefully she gets something out of it and she can pass it forward. Journey into higher ed, the teacher. Got a junior slash senior student at Michigan State. Emma, we got through the uh, beginning of your academic career getting into MSU. Now you're in MSU. What are some of the things that you really would like to, you can either go either way. You can go things you love, things you don't love so much. Some some things that you wish you would have known when you were coming in as a transfer student because you're unique as a as a transfer student. And I applaud you for being um, and utilizing your funds the right way because that's that's the right way to do it. If you're really on the fence, right? How was that decision? Let me ask you that first. How was that decision for you to do the JC route first, get the basketball scholarship, keep your costs down, keep your debt load low? I mean, how has that worked out for you? Uh, yeah, initially it was really, 
I struggled a lot with the decision because I got like bad FOMO, of course, with a lot of my friends that were just straight to university. And I, I know how the university vibe kind of is. There's a lot going on all the time, a lot of people to meet. So I struggled with making the decision at first, but also I was so in love and passionate about sports and my athletics all the time. And I did really want to go to a bigger city and I was still pretty much on the fence about what I wanted to do long term. So it ended up being like the best decision I have ever made for myself, like saving money and being able to pursue the sport that I was passionate about and still meeting like so many people that are going to be in my life for a long time. And just, I mean, even though I still don't play basketball anymore, it's like, that was the best decision ever. And like, it didn't change. It didn't alter anything that I'm going through right now. Like I don't, look back on my first two years of school and be like oh wow I wish that I was at MSU all four years like no I am perfectly content like waiting and saving money and um I'm proud of my journey and proud of the the direction I took and I definitely recommend that to anyone whenever I hear hear someone going say they did uh two years of community college I applaud them for sure because it's not easy but it's worth it Especially when they offer such good tuition assistance, and there's a lot of packages out there. LCC, Lansing Community College, locally here, has mm-hmm. pretty much tuition-free programs over there. So you're kind yeah. of foolish not to take advantage of these things. I'm curious to see um, what you have to say about the FOMO, because if people don't understand, don't know what that is, that's fear of missing out is a little acronym that's been out there for quite a while. But you probably went through that. I'm sure you said you did. How did you deal with that? Um, I guess my way of dealing with it was just knowing that I honestly got to play a sport still, like a lot of athletes in high school, they like sports are your whole life, but you don't always get to pursue that afterwards. And a lot of people just aren't dedicated enough to kind of pursue it. They want to get a head or a jump on their career, which is totally fair. So I guess like I always had that to fall back on and basketball was always like a safety net for me and got my mind off everything. So I I dealt with it kind of just knowing that I was doing something I loved and I was staying active and staying healthy and um, putting myself first, putting my education first. I was more focused, I guess, even though kind of I wish I got to experience a little bit more of university life earlier on. I I was a lot more focused and I never really fell behind in school at all. So Where are you with your debt load now? I don't have any. <laughs> I don't okay. Think. That's why I brought that up because I knew that I knew what she was going to say here. And I wanted to just exemplify that her, her effort that she's done, her debt load is zero at this point. You hear so much about this debt load, this debt load, this debt load with students and students making decisions on these types of things. When you have to fund all of your own, higher education like you're doing what is the what what's the magic sauce what's the what's the deal can you you got something you want to share with people we got about a minute and a half to go before we go to break you can finish the thread when we come back but what's the what's the magic between the balance of working and saving money and how to what what's what's the tip you want to give to people i don't know i just personally my push and just my dedication and like hardworking characteristics I got all from my parents because they've always had jobs growing up and I I am so grateful and the fact that they taught me to just earn things for myself and not have to rely on anyone and I think like I've seen how how it changes people when they do rely on their parents for a lot of their uh funding and just yeah like finances and stuff but I've been grateful enough to have a job for as young as I could and be able to pay for my first car and pay for all my bills and pay for my groceries when I moved out and I I love it so okay we're going to take it through to break here everybody Emma Gillies is my guest today journey into higher ed the teacher I like the debt load thing. We need to, we really need to share that information. Hey, and being an athlete at any level uh, above high school is something to be applauded. And I give her a lot of credit. She's a hard worker in the gym. That's what brought us together. Hardworking people tend to find me. That's the way it works. Journey into higher ed, the teacher, Emma Gillies. This is the Tom Matcher.
Boom. Boom. Easy. Build up your resume. <laughs> okay, so those were good tips. And I want to just continue about halfway through this segment with, um, because I have to do another read, but yeah. things that you in navigating MSU and living and making your friends and making good decisions and those kinds of things, we'll just riff on it, you know, just kind of have right. fun with it because it's like, can you get, you can, you can kind of get trapped into that party atmosphere kind yeah. of thing and help, help people understand that, you know, it's nice to have that social but and we're recording this video too, so people can see the whole video if they're watching the whole video. But mm -hmm. for the radio program, you know, explain to people, and I'll go into this about social and how social is obviously big. And you, you know, you're you're a Spartan now, it doesn't matter however it came. And so let me get this one going and then we'll jump into all the other Pat is Pat Gill high school or junior high? It's K through eight, so it's like a elementary okay. school oh it's a hybrid oh okay we'll talk about that when we when we make that segue we'll go there here we go third segment of the time at show is sponsored by our friends at white law jamie white unbelievable people greatness white law plc also sponsor of the mad dog minutes where justice meets compassion you will find the most trustworthy, honest people. All three of our sponsors, from Craig, 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 to Jamie, 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 to Brock, 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 all three of our sponsors are the most honest people I've ever met in my life. That's why they're sponsors of my show. That's we, we need to have integrity with what we're doing. White Law is your advocate in times of need. They are here to listen, support, and fight for what you deserve every day, anytime, if you got an issue, I've had this happen recently where I had a, a friend get a hold of me. They were in a kind of a jam. They needed to get some ideas on legal advice. Typically, when somebody calls me for legal advice, it's like, yeah, you know, what is that all about? But hey, it happens all the time. Contact White Law today. You can do it through our website. Get a hold of me. I'll send you over to Jamie if you want, or I'll call him like I did for my friend. But for a free, free, free consultation, you can visit whitelawpllc.com whitelawpllc.com or call this number 517-777-9785 that's 517-777-9785 and as I said Jamie White sponsors the Mad Dog Minutes which you see three times a week here on our YouTube channel so please check those out those are always fun from David DeMarco and David is the one who put all those things together and, and away we go with all of that introduce me to Jamie and Jamie is a big time Spartan, big, 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 big time Spartan and a loyal, loyal mid Michigan guy. So if you need help with the legal things in your life, get a hold of me, comatshow.com, bottom of the homepage, and away you go. Emma Gillies is our guest today. Journey into higher ed, another journey into higher ed, a new student that I met recently, although we seem like we've, feels like we've known each other for like ever. And it's just the way it works sometimes when you meet these souls and you just like kind of bond and it's like, boom. And it's just, you just got to accept it. I mean, that's, that's how I roll now. It's like we, we, her and I laugh about the, the universe bringing people together and all this. It's a fact. It's a fact. You know, when you have these spiritual people out there, they're writers they're creators they are doing these things they're helping people. They're helping kids. You know, we want to get together and do these things. So talking about getting together, Emma started talking a little bit about your, journey it into MSU and into the teaching profession. Let's talk a little bit about the social aspect. So you come in um, after transferring in from your two years in community college and you've got a whole different ball game now because living in East Lansing is a lot different than the JC life. And so let's, let's take it from there. What are some of the tips you'd like to give to young people, parents, grandparents, whatever that are out there with the social aspect of the higher education go ahead right um for me i got lucky enough to find roommates and find a very good crowd of people to surround myself with that they don't make me feel like i have to change who i am and coming into a super big college with so many people so many different people um it can be scary kind of uh branching out reaching out um I mean, it's definitely easy to be 
in social settings, but it's not easy to be social. Um, so I think like in, in my classes I've taken, I've, I, it's been great experiences. Every single person in my class has been so easy to talk to. And I think it's because we're all in the same boat. College is scary at times and it's a completely different world than high school. And everyone has moved away from their hometown for most of the part. So it's, it's all about finding people who just make you feel like you can be yourself and you don't have to kind of put on a filter or be a little bit fake. And with, uh, just such a big atmosphere and such a big school, like it's hard not to fall into kind of the toxic environment of maybe like the partying and the drinking and all this stuff that you can fall into. But I think when you, again, stick around people that don't make you feel like you have to do that, it's just a big eye opener and it's, it's comfortable. How did you figure that out so quickly? I mean, when did, were you just, do you think you were just fortunate and got lucky? Yeah. I mean, I got, super lucky like the people I live with now the girls I live with now my roommates they're from pretty close to my hometown and I think like we all are very similar we have very similar personalities and similar um just characteristics about ourselves we love to be social but we also love our alone time and we like just the simplicities of life a lot more than always having to be super busy and having to put um expectations on like our school year and our weekends like if we want to do just a craft night we'll do a craft night if we want to go out we'll go out um if we want to stay in and just watch a movie we'll do that so I think it's about just having people that respect kind of your interests and your boundaries I think that's a really huge part and um personally I've never been big into drinking ever and it's definitely hard kind of coming to a big university where that's the norm quote-unquote norm is going out every weekend and but um, I kept that true to myself and I don't ever just get pressured into doing anything because of everyone else doing it. Well, because you're balanced. I mean, and you have because you're an athlete, I think that when you and I don't think I believe that when you're an athlete, you have these characteristics that are kind of drilled into you. We won't have time to get into maybe next time we'll talk more about the coaching aspect that you went through as a kid and how it toughened you up and made you aware, you know, we can. I can say at least Emma didn't have the easiest coaches when she was first starting, but probably what made her a good athlete is dealing with getting, getting yelled at a lot. I mean, it happens. And so unfortunately there's some coaches out there that only know one speed and that that's that. So we got about three minutes to go through this segment here. And I want to set up the Pat and Gill, um, the, the other half of the episode with the teacher aspect. So set that up a little bit, Emma, because you're um, going to be graduating not too long, very soon, but you've already kind of found your, your people and your niche. How did this happen with your long-term substituting? You set up the whole thing. I'll give you the signal when we got to go to break, and then we can just continue the whole story because that's what we're going to do the rest of the show is talk about that and how we impact kids and young people. So how did it happen? What happened? Yeah, definitely. Um, After classes kind of ended spring semester, I knew I wanted to sub every single day of May and the rest of June as much as I could. And I saw this job at Pattengill, a school in Lansing I haven't been to yet. And they just needed one time sub just for the day. And I show up immediately. And these the kids in the classroom, just they're talking over everyone, talking over me, not paying attention to the lesson plans that were scheduled. So I was like, wow, this is, this is a tough, this is like a tougher school I've been to. These kids are really being disrespectful. And uh, a worker there, he was like, yeah, we haven't had a real teacher in this classroom since like a month and a half. It was, so they have had different subs every single day and they brought up me staying and asked if I wanted to stay the rest of the year. And the disrespect I was getting from the kids, I was like, oh, I'm not coming back to this school, but that's, what it's about it's about they were acting like that because they didn't have someone that stuck with them and they it's all about consistency 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 and when I mentioned that I was staying the rest of the year to them their eyes just lit up they wanted me to stay so bad and which was surprising to me because usually like growing up when we had subs every day it was like yes but when it's someone that sticks with you and like wants them to do as the best that they can to improve their grade. It's like their whole, their response just changed completely. And they were really grateful for that. 
Okay, so that's an excellent lead into where we're going to be going for the rest of the show, everybody. Emma Gillies is our guest. I'm going to take this through, Emma. we got a, we got a break coming up here. The journey into higher ed, the teacher. Here are some of the topics. I asked Emma specifically for the teaching topics, but being a young teacher in the education field and mistakes, how educators respond to children with learning disabilities, that's a that's a I'm interested to hear her perspective for that. As a young professional, how to connect with kids, that's huge because what she was just saying with the consistency, these kids have been abandoned their whole life. A lot of kids are being raised either homeless or they have one parent households, or if it was if it has one parent, maybe the one parent's working four jobs. Hard to say. And they're basically raising themselves, raising the kids are raising themselves. And so it's a tough deal. And then the last point that she sent over, which is big, the importance of structure and expectations. How do we set deliverable expectations without putting too much pressure on the kids? Because, you know, you could tell them they're going to be an A student all day long. And just like Dr. Carol Dweck said in, uh, in, in her book, Mindset, it's growth or fixed mindset. How do we stimulate the growth mindset? Again, Emma Gillies, my guest, Journey into Higher Ed, the teacher. This is the Tom Matt Show. How you like that? Good. Just, pu just Good pull that. Just, just pull it right out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing about this thing for me is it's I'm just a curious talker. And as I told you before, I think, again, as I said to I forgive me if I repeat myself, but I'm a talker who writes. Mm -hmm. You're a writer who talks. Okay. There's a big difference between the two. I mean, I look at your stuff and read your stuff and I'm like. Whoa, you know, I have enough confidence now because I've written enough stuff that it's like, okay, just get it down, just get it down, just get it down. Don't beat yourself up over this stuff. But when I see, you know, your structure and the way you're doing things and the passion and the purpose and all these things that you're doing, and it's pretty sweet. So I, I read another one of your poems today, and it's like, you know, I'm going to start chipping away at them and just pulling out little, little the the clips, the sentences that I think are impactful to me that I think people need to read that are. You can put up in, on Instagram. Otherwise, I'll just send them to you directly and say, hey, you know, I, this obviously felt personal. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, hey, that's what it's all. It's all about the emotion. All right, here we go. Got another read to do. Got two more segments. We got lots of time. Here we go. Fourth segment of Tom Ed Show is sponsored by Brock. Brock, 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 Brock Fletcher. Selling team of Keller Williams just went to one of his events this past week and it's fun. Had a great time. I'd missed this event several times with Brock, and I told him it's this putt-putt thing they do out at um, at Eagle Eye Golf Course here in mid-Michigan. And it's a, it's the coolest thing because I don't play golf anymore, although I used to play a lot of golf. My dad was so mad at me, God rest his soul, for giving up golf. But I, and I had to find something else that really kind of did my thing. So Brock had this thing out at, at Eagle Eye, and it's on this putt-putt course that's like real grass it's real putting it's like par threes par fours but it's all putting it's so so much fun and i thank brock for doing that the events that he does he does that for his customers because full disclosure as everybody knows through mike deadman how you doing mikey mike deadman was our buyer's agent for little house lansing here and brock was our seller's agent for big house holt when we when we got rid of that giant place and had to get out from underneath all that expense. It was just like, it was, it was time. I mean, it was too much for two people. And it's like, okay, it's fine when you got kids going and we had our teams coming over swimming in that pool and all this stuff. But then the time comes to make the, make the change. If you're ready to make the change, here's a couple of numbers coming at you. 517-853-6408. 517-853-6408. Excuse me. 517-303-3262 or go to online to kwsellingteam.com. Sell your home without hassles. That's Brock Fletcher and the selling team. Most agents and companies outside of the Keller Williams environment, they start spending money on marketing when you give them the listing so they have a little bit of money. They have some incentive to go market your house. He starts this stuff just like the putt-putt thing I was telling you about. He starts all of this stuff way, way ahead of time and does this because it's the right way to treat his people. And again, remember, we've got all those episodes on the website, the reality of real estate, go there. If you've got questions on real estate, just put it in there in our little search box on the website, tomatshow.com. And you can find, probably get your, your question answered 
right then and there. Again, that's Brock Fletcher at the selling team of Keller Williams Realty, where trust is his middle name. Again, the last, the phone number, 517-303-3262 is Brock's cell phone number. He will return your call. I absolutely, absolutely guarantee it. All right, my guest today is Emma Gillies, Journey into Higher Ed. And now the teacher. So we've, we're kind of splitting the show in half. We've got her journey into becoming a student at Michigan State and being successful. And then going into the teaching profession where she has had some extensive experience at Pattongill. Pattongill used to be a middle school in Lansing. And now it's like a hybrid. And I'm going to let Emma talk about the, the whole setup over there. But you you gave us the snapshot of the first, the first day. The first day of, uh-oh. And, and the other thing that we need to mention, too, is you're an English major. You want to be an English teacher, but you didn't teach. This This substituting job that you had was not English. It was science, yeah. right? So how challenging. I mean, you got these challenging kids. You got this challenging environment and the inner city stuff. And, it's, and Lansing's not like it. Lansing's a good town. I mean, it's not like it's bad, bad, bad. It's Don't, don't get me wrong here. If you've never been to Lansing, you might think, is it like, the south side of Chicago, not even close, not even close. It's a great place to live, but go ahead. Take it from there, girly. Um, you know, you're, you you get this assignment, but the kids, once they found out that you're going to stick with them, boom, you got it. You got an entry point. What did you do from there? Yeah, my, uh, luckily I worked with someone, the teacher next to me who also teach science. She showed me the document of all the sub plans she had laid out for the rest of the year because she planned on having different subs every day. So she made it as easy as she could. But uh, right after I accepted the rest of the year, I went home that day, went to the grocery store, bought a bunch of snacks for the kids. Bought, um, I bought these little stars. These like styrofoam stars. And I wrote bathroom pass, uh, office pass, nurse pass, uh, water pass. And I wrote Miss Emma's room, 230, I think I was. So, and then I got home and I made a classroom expectation document on Canva, just a cute little sheet on there. And I wrote bullet points of just things that I expected of the kids and what I wanted my classroom to look like. Um, I emphasized a lot of, um, I emphasized respect a lot every single day when I went to sub at different schools. I always brought up the point of just being respectful because it's so important and it's, it's so tough for these kids to learn that in this society today. Um, so why do you think I, hold, hold, hold on, hold on a second there, Miss Emma. Why do you think that is so hard for kids nowadays to learn that? I think there was, there's just such a split. Um, it's a lot of like social media. I think a lot of kids, younger kids now get so influenced by it. And luckily I think I kind of was at the age where I just missed that. Um, and I think it was easier kind of learning ways in a smaller town. I think when you live in a bigger city, there's like less importance on the fact of kind of respect. And there's just like so many different voices coming at you. You never know how to act. Like it, it, it's all about kind of how your parents raise you too. So I, I could tell that maybe these kids didn't have the best lives at home. They didn't really know. They didn't understand that the concept of respect and you can't always blame them for that because it's not always their fault. It's uh, well, if they're not taught. I mean, if they haven't, learned, if they've never, right. If they've never experienced this, it's already cut you, but if they've never experienced this, how in the hell are they going to be able to make a judgment on that? They, they don't know what respect is unless somebody has given them respect or taught them what respect means. Right. It's all, all behavior is learned behavior in my opinion so i the first day i got there i scrapped the lesson plans that were for the day it was like a friday i think so these kids they already were kind of out of focus so i i spent the, the day um having them all make name tags so we did uh they wrote their name super big and then in each corner i said write your favorite hobbies in this corner your favorite snacks so i know what to bribe you guys with and then i had them write um something they're going to do this summer and then in the last corner it was uh what's your dream what's your dream career what's just a dream you have so I turned on music in the background while they did that I put some like clean like 90s rap they really loved that and I bought them a bunch of snacks I had them just eat snacks and work on their name tags and we just kind of vibed out that day and I they really, really enjoyed that. And I loved watching them be creative. Like I bought markers and colored pencils for them to make their um, 
name tags fancy. I had this one student, she loved basketball. So she did like big, she drew like big basketballs on her name tag. And it was so like, personally for me, that was amazing to see because I love basketball so much. So just like being able to learn what they loved and like knowing what makes them them, what makes them tick, like what they're, what they want to achieve and what they like to do. And just that was really important for me, not what where their grades were at the first day, but learning about them so I know what I need to do in my classroom to make their grades go up and make them more engaged and feel cared for and loved for and respected by me. What were some of the mistakes that you made right off your list of tips that you wanted to share? What were some of the mistakes that you yeah. made? You obviously found sort of a mentor in a older teacher who could kind of guide you and you're in a subject that you're that you don't even study in college. I mean, right. so I mean Wow. That's a, you took on quite a huge challenge. I really applaud you for that. I mean, that's, that, that's one of the reasons I wanted to have you on was to let the students out there know you got to take on these challenges. If you want to be a professional, you got to get out there and you got to do the work, right? Yeah. What are it's, some of the mistakes you made? A couple of mistakes I made. It's, it's definitely challenging being a younger teacher, kind of how I was viewed at from the older teachers that were at schools or, um, Immediately when you walk into a classroom, the kids, I mean, you really want to differentiate differentiate yourself from a peer and a teacher. You want to make sure that they don't see you as a peer, which I struggled with a lot because I wanted them to know that I love them and I could be funny with them and understand kind of the jokes they were saying. But I fell short of kind of like letting some of my own like casual language kind of slip out and like just stuff that I kind of say day to day. So I really didn't want to be seen as like just not a teacher to them. And I think I did a good job of doing that, but I also, I don't know, they were, it was towards the end of the school year. I knew that their focus wasn't always there. So I could have definitely been a little bit more stern, but I struggled a lot with kind of like raising my voice and calming down the classroom a lot. And I think that's important to learn as educators. And I think hopefully I'll get more of kind of those uh, approaches in some of my MSU classes, but yeah. Um, I don't respect know. is huge. Respect yeah. is huge. And if you, you have to, you have to earn it from them. I'll carry this through Emma, cause we're going to come up break. And that was really, really well said the way you did that. But I like what you said about your classroom expectations chart. Um, your casual language slipping out. I can just imagine what that's <laughs> all about. I mean, because these kids, you know, you've got kids from elementary school all the way up to almost high school, eighth grade. Yep. It, it's a big, it's a big group of kids and they're, you know, some of these kids are older and they're teenagers. And so they already have a lot of their, their behaviors already established. So again, you getting to set expectations, try to establish all of that respect, all of these typical things that you have to learn. It's very, very challenging. Emma Gillies is our guest today, everybody journey into higher ed. This portion of the show is about the teacher and how we can connect with our kids. You're listening to the Tom Manchin. So easy, easy, easy stuff. Very simple. See, I never used to do it um, early in the days. I never, I never did this part over here that I'm looking at with my, my little command central that I have while they, all these three computers and all this stuff, but I never did the production side of like this, the file, getting the files together. I just always had a producer and then I would just talk and he would do it remotely and it was kind of clunky, but it, I knew as this thing became real, it was like, I need more redundancy because I could only record on Thursday nights with this guy, uh, my producer who I had for a long, long time. And he was great. But now we have Mitch Anderson who I told him I need to have redundancy. I want to be able to do this myself and I want to be able to record anytime I want, anywhere I'm at. So I have equipment now that I can take on the road and I've done it and I've recorded in Arizona. I've recorded all over the place. I like recording here because all my stuff works perfect here. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, you know how it is with tech. Okay. So mm -hmm. we got to about this and this is the top of the fifth. So this is where I'm going to throw it to you for your, <clears throat> excuse me, when I throw it to you for contact info, right? I'm going to do my website real quick and then I'm going to get yours and then we'll jump right back into it. And we've got um, three more points on here. How, what order do you want me to go with? Do you want me to go with the importance of the structure expectations, which is the last one, how to connect with kids, low income, high diversity areas. That's big. 
Um, yeah. Do you want me to just pick myself and you just riff? How do you want to do it? Uh, I feel like I already kind of talked a little bit about the structures and expectations. Uh-huh. It's kind of, so if you want to skip to, uh, and I mentioned like being a young teacher, yep. uh, maybe talking about IEPs and learning disabilities. You know, that's exactly what I, I was just thinking the same thing. And then into Lance. Pretty God, that's a big topic. We will just carry that through because yeah. you already have kind of the structure and the expectations a little bit in there. And so, but again, that's again, developing that trust and respect. Okay, here we yeah. go. Not it. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the fifth segment. You're catching the fifth segment. You're on some of our radio stations out there, especially WKAR, News Talk AM 870 at Michigan State University. Go green or you're on the podcast, which so many people listen to the podcast now. It's kind of become its own beast. But you know, the craziest thing about the Tom Matt Show website, TomMattShow.com, and that is our website, is that I always wanted to be on broadcast radio. I thought broadcast radio was the thing that was 13, 14 years ago. And now, you know, podcasting was like brand new. When we first started, it was it was still in its infancy. And now it's so ubiquitous that it's everybody's got one. Everybody's trying to do one. And we've been doing this thing. We'll start our 14th season here uh, in a couple of months. And so it's just like it's become the podcast has become bigger than the broadcast, although they both work together. My guest today, Emma Gillies, Journey into Higher Ed, the teacher. Emma, this is contact contact Emma spot. How do they get a hold of you? Share your whatever you'd like to email, um, speaking engagements, um, teaching assignments, any of these kind of things that you'd like people to know and perhaps hire you because you're a great speaker. You're an excellent writer. Um, your poetry is amazing. I can see you being a published author for sure someday and perhaps, you know, being on the speaking circuit. You've got a lot of upside and it's just like just because you're you and it's just like okay it's all good how do you want people to find you and maybe explore those opportunities yeah definitely um i am always checking my school email so the next two years that's definitely the most important probably way to contact me so it's gilly 12 g-i-l-l-i-e 12 at msu.edu and then um always available to answer my phone text calls leave a voicemail at um 810-941-1275 and okay. i would love to we may blank that one out oh that one <laughs> that's gonna be up to mitch well it's not, it's it's recorded into the segment but i may have mitch take that out because i don't want your phone to get completely destroyed but we'll see what he has to say about that you know we <laughs> want to protect you too let me tell you, let me put it to you this way, everybody that's out there. If you want to get a hold of Emma or any of our guests, you know the contact box, TomMattShow.com website. If you go to that contact box and you send us a note, it is email, write to Sandy, comes to show, definitely get it to me and I'll take care of that for you. But if you miss that phone number, maybe he'll put it up there. If he does, fine. If he doesn't, that's fine too. That's why we have producers. Okay, back to the journey. And the teacher aspect of it on your list of things. And this is very, very, very uh, important topic. How educators respond to children with IEPs, which I'm not sure what that means. Learning disabilities. I'm sure it's all tied together and behavior issues. Let's talk about this for the rest of the segment, because so many kids, you being one that I haven't brought up yet, you're a perfect example of the COVID kids. I mean, we've, I've talked about this many times on this show here, girl. And it's like, you guys got hosed. I mean, you were a junior in high school when went through COVID. So all of these kids that you're now teaching have been impacted in some way for the next probably 10 or 15 years, at least from that COVID two year lockdown. So this is probably a huge topic, how educators respond to children with IEP. What does IEP mean? So an IEP is an individualized educational uh, program and plan for a student. So you kind of evaluate um, how they learn in the classroom, behavior issues, and then get together a plan that maybe like, uh, for example, like if a student needs a fidget to kind of focus more and it helps them focus, like that will be in their plan and that will be approved by the school. So a teacher has to follow the IEP plan and look over um essentially all their students will have that like in the system so a teacher will when be learning that over that huh do you know when all of that started 
when that start of lesson planning started and that individualized, has that been going on for quite a while? I mean, I'm not an educator, so I don't know. It sounds like a great idea. Right. I would say a while, but that's kind of how I've seen like older educators because it wasn't a thing back then. Like, and learning how to handle and uh, deal with students that had behavior issues, learning disabilities, like that wasn't a big topic back then. So now like seeing firsthand working with older, the older generation, the older educators and seeing how they react to students with disabilities and behavior issues. It's like crazy to see. Very, very interesting. Okay. So let's carry on with this learning disabilities and behavior issues. So you set up these individualized learning plans, educational programs, and learning disabilities, do you get this type of training within your curriculum at MSU as a professional teacher? Is that all part of the curriculum? Yes, we are required to take a course called CEP 240, and it focuses a lot on uh, disabilities in the classroom. And uh, yeah, it talks a lot about IEPs and like 504 plans, which is in the subject of teaching. So I think MSU does a great job with kind of getting us into that knowledge of it. And also we have all of our teaching classes focus a lot on kind of like um, diversity and responding to kids and making sure that no kids are being labeled as bad kids in the classroom. That's thrown around so easily, especially from the older generation. I would go into sub at schools and I they would give me like an attendance list and they'd be like, okay, look out for these kids. And this kid's a bad kid. And like, you never want to hear that because that's someone's child. So it's more, more so understanding that that's a child that's just misunderstood and not a bad student or a bad kid because every kid is just, they just need to be handled with love and care and patience. It's so important to be patient with a student. And I think that's where you connected with your students because as you left and I've seen the pictures and how much all these kids adored you. I mean, it was just like an amazing transformation. You took kids that had two years of tech teaching Mm -hmm. and you're bringing them into an adult who actually loves them and cares about them and getting through that hard outer shell because these kids, 12, 13, 14 years old, they're already hardened, almost adults. They're like miniature adults. And you just got to kind of earn, like we talked about, you got to earn their trust and you got to earn their respect. And so I give you a lot of credit. What do you think about all of the distance learning that went on? Did it help our kids or did it not? That's just yeah, an opinion that I'm not trying to get you in trouble or anything here, but I just want your well, opinion as a future educator. Is there a place for it? Yeah, it's hard to see that school is just, it's so reliant on uh, technology now and learning everything on the screen. And I, unfortunately, that started kind of around junior year of high school when COVID hit, like we, it was all on the computer and it's so hard for people to learn that way. And for others, it's easy. And that's also great. But I think I personally could not sit at a computer all day if I was in sixth grade, fifth grade. Like I, I need more social interaction. So I think that's where kind of the separation between how these kids respond to, I mean, everyone and how they uh, act in the classroom. It's like, they're just constantly on the screen and looking at it and it's like social media is so crazy now and kids have so much access to uh phones and everything nowadays so it's like when luckily for me well not luckily but in Lansing if there's a sub they take away the Chromebooks because a lot of kids just wind up playing games on it so for me the long-term sub position I had we did packets and worksheets every day and that just opened them up so much more. And I think it was better for us, honestly. Tell me the difference now, because you're a writer and you're a reader, how much it's, how important it is for young people to learn how to read a book instead of just reading a computer, because I found it very challenging. They can do it now because I've been doing it for quite a while, reading things online and on a screen, but I'm still a paper book guy. I mean, what what's the difference for you? How do we get kids yeah. to get more into it? It's uh, it's not easy. I mean, even me, myself growing up, like it was hard for me to sit down and finish a book. And I 
I don't know. I, as I grow, as I grew up, I kind of just found it was so, it was so peaceful for me, especially when it's a book that I enjoy and really like am engaged in because so often in schools in our curriculum, we just read things that probably aren't as interesting as we would like. And we're just forced to read it because it's in the curriculum, which is totally fine. But um, I think like now it's important just to give kids the opportunity to read stuff they like and yeah I think Lansing does like a big book fair at the end of the year so I forgot exactly what the name is name of it was but I was subbing one day and they did it and we went down to a room and the kids got to pick out like two or three books and take them home and Lansing just provided all this all the schools with just tons of books and if these kids didn't want to take them home and read them which was pretty common um they would just donate them or I, I took a bunch of books home one day because a lot of my kids didn't want them and I donated them as well. But for some kids, they, they saw all these books and they were just like, wow, like they were so excited. What's your takeaway? I got a minute to go before we got to close this bad boy. Emma Gillies has been my guest today, everybody. Journey into higher ed, the, the teacher. What's your takeaway from this this half of the show that you'd like to share with the listeners? Um. I don't know. I guess just learning. You know what I would suggest? It's the respect thing. It's the connection thing. It's like you had FOMO going into college, but these kids have FOMO going into the classroom every day. If I mean, if it's a fun class, right? I mean, does that help? Yeah. It's just about like, it's, it's so much more important learning who your students are as humans and not who they are as students. And I think that is just such a big point because I would go to go to work every day, not even thinking it was work. So I love it. Excellent close. I've got my close that I've written to Emma and I want her to hear it now because I told her you're going to hear this tomorrow when we do this. Always remember before you can share love with others, you must love yourself first. This is the key to everything, everybody. You got to love yourself first. Absolutely no doubt about it. Again, thank you to Emma Gillies for being with us, Sandy, Craig, Brock, Jamie White. We'll talk to everybody next week and have a great week. Go out and ignite your life. Remember, the Tom Matt Show is a production of Boomers Rock Media. We want to bring your story to life. And lastly, I want to say thank you to our production staff, Mitch Anderson and Vanessa, my Philippine. She's awesome. We're out. That's it. Very well done. Okay, so now we're still recording video. And so take away from you and your thoughts. And we'll just, you know, we'll all, all of this goes into the big video. And then what Vanessa will do is she'll chop up our excerpt. And it's more about you than, you know, about my stuff. I just tell her I want, I want more guest profile. And so go through it. But um, what's your vibe? You talked about vibes. You vibed out. Remember I told you how much I like your vibe? First time I met you, liked your vibe. Yeah, I think it's all about just the vibes people give off. And uh, presentation is everything. And approach. And how you... uh, How you... uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Present yourself. That's what. But um, yeah, I'm big on like just making people feel welcomed. And like being approachable, like especially you being able to see me as someone that you felt like you could approach. And then obviously it led to having a great connection and a great um, relationship so far. And I can't see it like going anywhere else. So get better. It's, it's absolutely going to get better. No question about it. I mean, that's the full that fully anticipate that whole thing because we have to have it's so important to have the um, social connections. And this is where a lot of people in my generation and generations younger than me, actually, they get so freaked out and so intimidated by your youth and your knowledge and the the, the, the age discrepancy. And it's like, I embrace it. I like it. I mean, it's like I've always been around college students. It's been but it's just I've coached forever. And so it's like just a natural extension of these types of things, but we have to do more of these kinds of things. And when I work with people, the one thing that I ask them to do, because I don't obviously like with you, and I'm not charging you for my services. I charge some people, but it's like your payment to me is you paying it forward down the road. When you, when I'm gone, you're like, 
yep, when I was in college, I met this guy and you know what? Things just exploded. We changed things around. We did all this. And it's like, just pay it freaking forward. Just pay it forward. Do you ever see that movie, Pay It Forward? Mm -mm. Oh, my God, girl. You got to get that one. You don't make you cry. Pay okay. it forward for sure. And did you have you ever read the book Presence by Amy Cuddy? No. Oh, my God. You're going to have to send me a list. If it's not here, it might be my library at in Wisconsin, which, you know, we're going over there on Friday, Thursday, Thursday, Friday. I don't know what Friday and uh, I'll look over there, but presence it's, it's everything that you just said about being present. When you show up, instead of being all closed off, you come in open and you have that presence. It's a lot about public speaking and all that kind of stuff, but it's really, really well done. So, Hey, good job. And I will see you tomorrow. Um, yep. I'll probably be there. We'll probably get going about seven thirty. Um, get your rest, and glad you got your four in today. You working tonight? Nope, got the oh, day off. You're off tonight. Okay, good for you. So you're just kind of getting yourself ready for school to be ramping up here, and then um, we'll discuss kind of how we can hit the ground running next week when we start the sessions. You know, to get you going in your direction. Here's something you you need to think about because I have a pretty good idea what I want to do to augment my work with you at the, in the gym is going to be an augmentation of what you want to do for you. But it's like all the little things like the, the, the nutritional stuff, start your, um, your, your food journal. I really want to get an idea of your protein intake and how many grams you're getting a day because did I send you that video of my, yeah. I did send that to you. Did you watch it? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a fact. I mean, especially for older adults, but you know what? This is going to play really well. Your parents are going to be really proud of you. And so you look great and you're going to sound really good. And so there'll be different ways that you'll, you can either just listen to the podcast, the audio version, or you can watch the video or you can watch the excerpt. So lots of, you know how we do it now. You've seen, mm -hmm. you've seen enough of it. So I'll let you go. I got to do some production work and okay. I will see you. Thank you so much. I mean, it was Thank really, you, really solid. I'm glad I got you before the semester starts and we will we'll definitely revisit this. So when you get, space in your time and your schedule and you say, Hey Tom, I'm, I'm good for another episode. You got a green light. Just let me know your, your presentation, your presentation today was fantastic. And so if there's some aspects that you really feel are, are important, just listen and watch your episode and then just kind of take notes and use it as a tool because that's all this is, is a tool. Right. And just, um, see how we can help people. Okay. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. All right. That was a good one. She's awesome. Emma Gillies is just um, love finding these just diamonds in the rough and how she is just a, such a, she's just a great girl. I mean, just got a great attitude. Very, very humble. Uh, been through some stuff, but we all go through stuff. That's what's going to make her a great educator. You know what? When I compliment these students at MSU that are going into fields like teaching, like social work, they're, they're not going in for the money. They're going in because they love what they're going to do. And that's where she is. So as the kids got tremendous, tremendous upside. So we'll leave it there till next time, everybody, you know, way go up here, get the full episode right there. Click on that little tile. And um, it'll take you to the full on episode and see if you like just take it from the excerpt and away you go. Until next time, everybody, I'm Papa Tom, and this has been the Tom Matt Show. Thank you so much for listening, doing the thing, and subscribing and being fans of the show. Going to start our 14th season here pretty soon, and it's all surreal. Until next time, peace out. Love y'all.